Okay. Thunder, like you've never imagined. Good morning ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this is David Steele and here's me truck and we're up in Alaska. Today we are taking a very early morning haul, uh, it's 2am on a Sunday and so why is the train making such a racket? Anyway, it's 2am on a Sunday and we are in Alaska and we've got some iron pipes to take on our, I think it's a, it's reckons it's going to be a 5 hour 20 minute journey. Yeah, I think it's going to take longer. Um, I'm actually going to skip to a closer view. There we go. So today's truck is a bit of a trigger vehicle yet again. We're in a Macar. And the Macar are making a right mess of this. Try it again. And under the hood, we've got a uh, Zmods voiced Detroit Diesel Series 60. I think, you know what, I think I turned off... Um, the advanced coupling, let's just check. Yeah, I did. Alright, well, we'll not worry about that too much right now. Let's go ahead and get the uh, the wagon configured. Okay, let's jump back in. So, that is uh, a Z-Mods uh, Series 60. I think the sound is actually the 14 litre. This is an 11 litre engine, but uh, that's, that's okay. I'm um, not going to worry too much about the details because this is as the engine comes in my, in my um, engine pack. Yes, we're definitely far north. Anyway, so I'm excited on the one hand that uh, Z has uh, given me permission to use his free engines, uh, engine sounds, as part of my uh, mod pack because, um, yeah, I like a bit of Z mod sounds. But um, it means I can trigger a uh, truck. What I mean by that is, um, some people, a lot of Mac fans, would really dislike the idea of um, having a Detroit diesel engine, or a Cummins, or anything other than a Mac engine, inside a Mac. These are the people, some of these people get very upset at the Volvo engines being in the, the current Mac range. Well, I don't mean to trigger people. I suppose in a way I do. Let me rephrase. I'm not going to not use a drivetrain because it upsets some people. May have just cut the grass there. Okay. Right, let's. Uh, we've got to get a move on here today. Just going to drop the volume a little bit. It's a little better. I'm currently using the truck in automated mode, but I may well switch to um, just shift if I'm going to. I'm just going to shift myself. There we go. So we've got a 10 speed here today. I um, believe it's a, well, it should be a 10 speed direct with a 308 final drive. But it's fitting a little taller than that. I may have uh, made a mistake when specking the truck. The reason why I wanted a, a short. Uh, short ratio is because I'm only using a 250 horsepower series 60 so it's 11 liters 11.1 11 .1, 250 rated horsepower and just 970 foot-pounds of torque it's a 1995 um, specification engine that I used for this maybe worrying about the gearing a little too much the truck is configured for vocational duties uh, this little Mac R um, if we can get a look, go. Got the heavy duty dynamics tires on there. We've got steel wheels, got some beacons, like so. Don't have any of the um, aerodynamic packaging on the on the truck today. Don't need any of that nonsense. Yes, and it's an 8 um, LL transmission, so it's the vocational uh, box. Cargo today is over 57,000 pounds of steel pipes. 
so it's a bit of a challenge um, for this sort of engine but that's why we wanted the, the shorter gearing it gives me a it helps let's just say and the series 60 can uh, go up to 2100 rpm and that is useful gives me better flexibility so right now I'm revving it out in third 2000 rpm I will shift up go oh I like this corner yes this really tight right hander maybe we can do it without actually using the external view So with this kind of heavy haul, um, I am going to drop to the, the lower two gears in the gearbox. That's uh, low, low and low. They're like sisters you might meet at a party. Let's drop it to low, low. Okay. Oh, come on, SUV. Really? Why are you stopping right there? That just doesn't help anyone. Okay, I might have to back up. This guy's going to do the same thing. Come on. No, no, come on. Don't freaking stop right there because I can't pull out. Idiots. Go! Yeah, it's a little feature of uh, the AI. They will stop um, as though they're trying to make a point, and uh, some people do that. Okay. But everyone? Yeah, no. Right, we're going to get back up to speed. I'm going to hold everyone up. That might be a bit of a theme of today's trip, is holding people up. Uh, this Western star is painted in what looks like Fitzgerald Green. Uh, Fitzgerald being a uh, manufacturer or I suppose a provider of um, glider kits back in the day. I don't know if they're still in business or if they are, if they're still doing the same business because gliders were effectively outlawed. Um, and if you're not familiar with, with what a glider is, it's taking the running gear from an older truck and installing it into um, a newer shell, I suppose, a newer truck. It was a way of... Um, getting around, having to have modern emissions in a truck. Now, oh, come on, stay in your lane, David. These short wheelbarrow trucks are really sensitive. And I should have got some fuel before we set off today, okay. Well, we'll see how well this, this, this goes. It's gonna be a little thirsty today, I think, because um, we're gonna have to work the engine hard. Um, 1600 revs in ninth, and I'm doing 45. And I'm at full power now, full full throttle. Go ahead and shift up when we get around this corner. The people we wish to merge. And shift up, okay. Right, well. Of course, this truck has slowed down because sometimes the AI does that too. This might be one of those trips where the AI does everything it can to infuriate me. So we've got to get there by 11 o'clock this morning, and it reckons right now we're going to get there about 8.30. So I, I think we're going to be okay for, for time. There we go, 57,400 pounds of iron pipes. Go ahead and get back into top. So it pulls um, fairly well from 1200 RPM. I'm going to go ahead and just set my cruise. Set it at 50 right now. Um, so 39 gallons, 292 miles is the estimate, but I'm not sure I really believe that. What was my... Uh, uh, three point... Wow, well, that's not good. 3.7 to the gallon. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I was using uh, a very different engine. Um, okay. That makes sense. And yeah, we are running a 308 direct drive. I can tell from the gearing. I'm gonna just uh, use a bit of engine brake here. We're, uh, we're speeding. It's a shame to throw all that energy out because it's useful to save fuel, but I also don't wanna get busted speeding. We'll see if we can keep it at 55, but I don't think we'll be able to. Yeah, 
I'm going to drop it down to 50. Well, let it... We're climbing a hill. Let it get down to 50, and then we'll just um, drop the cruise. Is it about to go down a hill? Okay. We started to pick up. So I don't need to, to let the speed build up too much on the downward gradients. Um, gravity can do its thing, and I'm actually going to use the engine brake just to keep it under control. So engine brake's engaged. It's, it's going to... There we go. starts to kick in. Uh, we're still picking up speed. Let's shift down. The brake is definitely at the highest setting. That's 2100 RPM in 7. And got it back under the under power. See if we've got this, this hill without losing speed. And I think we are, so yes. Alright. Maybe there's hope for the plucky little Series 6 at the 11 litre yet. So I really wanted to do a run in the small hours of Alaska because if the weather is is right, um, the the cooler northern um, hemisphere or northern areas of the map can do this and is doing it now. This wonderful mist type thing, getting a bit of popping on the scenery, but um, this is beautiful. Um, the lighting and in Alaska it's going to be this light level for quite a bit longer than if we we're in say Texas. Plus, uh, who doesn't like one of the more challenging um, roads, or road networks, I ought to say. I'm, uh, I'm still a fan of the Alaska map. I've not driven on it that much in the last um, couple of weeks of real-world time as I make the video, but that doesn't mean I don't enjoy it. There's other projects on the go, and wow, if I don't sound a little hoarse, I have to take a bit of water. Okay. Maybe I need coffee. Oh, and speed limit. So a little harsh on the uh, the drivetrain there. Very harsh, to be fair. Dropping down two gears and using 2300 RPM to, as an engine brake is, um, I don't know, is it a really bad thing or just a bad thing? Are they built to take it? Interesting. Still, I like the fact that um, we can uh, kind of work this thing hard. Uh, coming up to fuel, um, I am going to get fuel. I don't really know when my next fuel station is going to be. One thing about Alaska, you can have lots and lots of fuel stations in some parts of the map, and in other parts, you've got nothing. So, if you're getting a little low, I mean, it's true anywhere, I suppose, but if you're getting a little low on motion lotion, uh, just, just get some more. You might be late, but you'll be very late if you... Uh, if you run out. This one's actually quite a good size fuel station as well. It, it, it helps if it's big. And yes, Zach, that is what she said. Okay. Right. Gently pull this thing to a stop. Let's go ahead and pop that up. Engine off. Right. This is the, uh, the short wheelbase Macar. Uh, so we can see that it's a tiny little thing. We went with the square tanks today for ground clearance purposes. The the round tanks, in some regards, I prefer the the look of them, but you get a little bit less gr ground clearance. And something that's meant for vocational duties, it's uh, going to be useful to have that ground clearance. We had 25 gallons left. Not so much. But now I don't have to worry about it. Get a good shot from behind here. Not, not really. Not of the kind of of the sky. Oh, we might do when we leave. Don't necessarily need to go through every gear sequentially, but um, going to. Well, curb here. Let's see if we can get that that shot. 
may have labored the engine a little bit there. That is pretty. It's a shame there was that that vehicle's right up close behind me, but that is that is pretty. Oops, I didn't mean to go up two gears there. Right, enough of that. Let's uh, let's stop daydreaming. Let's get back on the road. And let's see if I can get the thing up to 55, seeing as we've got enough fuel. So, route-wise, there's not that much showing uh, between us and the edge of the map. So, um, yes. Okay. Yeah, that lovely dawn, dawn look. Temperature is showing us 62 Fahrenheit, which is kind of mild um, for this map. Sometimes it can be pretty cold. And it's also unfortunate there aren't many passing spaces. Here's one for traffic behind me, and the more aggressive trucks or, and cars will, uh, will zip round, but no one's taking it right now. And maybe a little too slow for top gear. Yeah, I think I am. And now I might be a little too fast for this corner. Yes, way to go, David. Way to demonstrate terrible driving. Balance it with a bit of power. Then we get off the power completely for the next corner. Let the speed bleed off. As we start to turn in, let go a little wide and give it a bit more power. Go. We change down though. Managing my energy is going to be, uh, well, it, it, to be fair, on in the Alaska map, it, it's a challenge anyway, because you've got hills, and some of those hills, they put the other hills in the standard maps to, to shame. So, like, actually, here's one we're coming up to. So we drop down, and I'm going to use uh, full power on the way down, because I'm only doing, well, almost 50. We'll up shift to 50. We'll use the torque. We may end up just shifting down. Though actually, we're almost doing 55. Okay. And we'll downshift if I need to. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and down, downshift. So we're using a bit more power here, but we want to keep the thing rolling. And it looks like it's worked. Yeah, we got up at 49 as opposed to, if I'd shifted down a little later, we would have been producing a bit less power. And yes, there's not much, but it, it would have, uh, we could have gone up the hill a little bit slower. Now, you get that right, um, you save fuel and maintain progress. You get that wrong, you use a lot of fuel and don't go any quicker um, up the hill. So right now we're not really picked up any speed. It's going to let it labor along. Well, it's not quite laboring. It's 12.50 RPM. It's going to let it keep going. Consumption will be a little better at this speed and this gear, as opposed to dropping it down to 7th. Yeah, now it's picking up. It's that pipeline to my right. Enjoy watching that as, uh, as we go through the map. I think it's... Uh, Cut my cruise to 50. This looks a little tighter, but not excessively so. Oh, uh, should be okay at this speed. Yes, we are. It's back on the power because we're climbing again. Uh, might change. Yep, going to shift down. And then as we crest, um, we'll we'll shift up. Like so. Like so. Okay, there we go. Get in gear. 
So when I'm pointing down a hill, I really want the gravity um, to help, or gravity is going to help. So I don't need to um, give it more power at the engine end, which is a wasting fuel, unless I absolutely have to get up to speed, and I really don't. I'm not interested today in getting up to 60, although let me just check uh, the time. I think we're doing great. Yeah, we're doing fabulous. We've got you know, a long, two, almost two and a half hours spare. So there's no, there's no time pressure. If this were an urgent delivery, you'd argue that this is not the right truck for it. And if you're using a Macar for an urgent delivery and it's great, it's hilly territory, you're going to want um, quite a bit more power. So uh, an E6, 350 maybe, um, or if you can stretch to an E7, um, you can get a 400 in, in here. The R600, Mac recommends, I think the term is strongly recommends, at most 400 horsepower. Um, you can fit more in the game, you can fit whatever you like. But if you wanted more power, you probably want to be looking at the um, R700 dash as opposed to the, not dash, um, hood as opposed to the 600. Gives you a lot more space. And to be fair, if I were looking at something like the Caterpillar 3406 for the Mac R, which is an intriguing combination, it's another trigger truck. Uh, the Mac fans will be, you know, don't you put that Caterpillar anywhere near my beautiful Mac, and I don't disagree. Going too fast again. That's me gassing away and not uh, not planning my my driving. Of course, we've we've bled off all that speed, now we're going to have to get the engine to work extra hard to go up this hill. I suppose I could have kept it going on a downshift now. Try and keep it going up, up the hill. No, we may be needing to downshift again, but I think it's starting to flat now. Yep, I think so. I wonder how well the Series 60 does with a 5-speed. Hmm. Alright, so it's flattening off, um, and then we should start to pick up speed again. Although, um, a tighter corner coming up, but it's hard to judge sometimes. I'm going to go ahead and um, just put the cruise to 45. Yeah, I'd rather get back on the power when we, we reach the corner, not before. They're already picking up speed. So I reckon about now, tap the cruise up to 55. We'll keep it in 7. We're going to need that extra power. If I'd shift it up, I'd be shifting down again. And Every time you shift gear, you, you lose a bit of speed. You lose turbo boost pressure. In, unless you're in an Allison, and then you may not do. Or you're using an Allison, not in an Allison. I think that's... Uh, Yeah, that was it was the right choice to keep it in the lower gear. Burn a bit of extra fuel on the way in, but save a bit of fuel and better progress on the way out. Let's get it back into top. Keep the cruise at 55, because if we can get up to the speed limit, that'd be good. It avoids me upsetting too many people with my lack of progress. My inability to drive third person as I drift all over the road. Let's try that again, shall we? Okay, okay stay in your lane. Yeah, really not very smooth like that. Oh well, you should see me try and play a third person shooter game. It's got up to 60, but possibly only for a very short stretch of road. So there's a section of road here that I haven't uh, driven on. Just a tiny little little sliver up here. I will not be doing that today. But I, if I wonder why I've only got 99.99% of Alaska, that's the bit. So... Put in 25 gallons, what's our tank? Yeah, I would have been okay, actually. Because I've only, well, wait, no. I think I've burnt 25 gallons. Yeah, I would have run out. 
I was the right choice to um, to stop and get fuel when I did. Then again, I was a little bit more aggressive with uh, with the power because I knew I had a full tank, so that that does make a difference. I, it would have been touch and go if I could have uh, made it without stopping. Well, we're almost at our destination in what turned out to be a um, pretty uneventful trip, which I'm glad for. I don't always want my trips to be exciting. Um, I'll have the joy of attempting to park this, but I'll worry about that when I park. Possibly didn't need to shift up, but I'm not going to go any quicker. I'm just going to let the speed bleed off now. Right, well, um, that just about wraps up today's trip. So um, I hope that you enjoyed this uh, jaunty little morning run into um, let's uh, to Alaska, through Alaska, I should say, not into. And um, yeah, if you like the sound of what you're hearing today, the Series 60 is available for most trucks. Got the full complement of 11, 12.7, and 14 liters. They all sound the same. So um, if you're a fan of the 12.7 and the 11.1, and you don't like the fact that they sound like the 14, then this is probably not the uh, engine pack for you. But hope that you enjoyed it. And uh, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks so much, everyone. Goodbye. <laughs>